It's been over two decades since that famous Nike ad where Charles Barkley said that he is not a role model, that athletes are not role models, that parents should be role models. And I've always kind of viewed it with a bit of a, a double-edged sword. On the one hand, I got what he was saying, I understood it, and he was very correct. But then on the flip side of that, he also, I think, failed to understand that athletes are role models whether or not they should be and they should conduct themselves in a certain way knowing that young males and females are going to be looking towards them as a role model for what they want to be in their life similar to somebody like Charles Barkley did with athletes when he was a kid but I will say this is that sometimes those words from Charles Barkley ring so true in my ears because there are certain athletes that we shouldn't take seriously. There are certain athletes that clearly would make for terrible, horrible role models. And in this particular case, one shining example of that to me is LaShawn McCoy. Now let me get this straight. LaShawn McCoy is inferring, actually pretty much flat out saying, that Chip Kelly is a racist. That he doesn't like black players, he doesn't understand them, he doesn't get them, therefore that's why he's trying to get rid of them. It's a great white crusade in the city of brotherly love. Apparently it's not the city of brotherly love, according to LaShawn McCoy. It's the city of white is the only right. Chip Kelly's a racist? No, LaShawn McCoy is fucking stupid, period. Uh, this is just astounding to me. Because when I hear instances of this, clear-cut, way off the point, totally off the mark race baiting, it frustrates me. Because these are the type of things that are able to be used by one entity in this country to sit there and deflect away from some of the real deep-rooted racial issues that we still face as a society, in particular in this country. Yes, things are a lot better in this country than they were 50 years ago. But frankly, what the fuck is that really saying? But when you have somebody like LaShawn McCoy, a black male, just trotting this out there and prostituting this out there like this is something that's okay to accuse somebody of without any real facts or evidence, that's a huge and significant problem. Two of the worst things I think you could ever say that a person is both begin with the letter R. They're not the only two terrible things, but two of the worst. That's a racist and a rapist. Because if you get that label of being a racist, whether it's fair or not, it's not something you're ever going to be able to escape. It's something that's always going to hang over you like a dark rain cloud. And I hate when people throw that word out there and throw that out there when it doesn't apply and it doesn't fit. Because, like I said again, it diverts attention away from real serious issues where that is a problem. And if there are people that think in this society today that there, there are not race issues and that black males in particular do not experience issues because of the color of their skin, then I call that either white guilt or white denial. And that's just the way I see it because I believe that to be the way it is. But what LaShawn McCoy said about Chip Kelly is just ridiculous on so many different fucking levels. So let me get this straight. Because guys like Deshaun Jackson have left and Jeremy Macklin have left and you, Sean McCoy, were traded, that makes Chip Kelly a racist. Let's evaluate this for a second. He allowed Deshaun Jackson to go because Deshaun Jackson was a pain in the ass. He wasn't a pain in the ass because he was black. He was just a black pain in the ass. Meaning he was just a pain in the ass, period. Always bitching about this, wanting a new contract every freaking year. Chip Kelly got rid of him because he got tired of him in the freaking locker room. He got tired of him sitting there bitching about a new contract every year. That's why he would allow somebody like a Deshaun Jackson to be cut. That's why he would make that decision. He thought it was going to be addition by subtraction. We see teams do this all the time with black athletes and white alike. In the case of Jeremy Macklin, it's just a situation of he got a better deal with Kansas City. Philadelphia didn't want to step up to the table and pay him, so he went somewhere else. That's capitalism. It's not racism, you fucking idiot. And then when it comes to the LaShawn McCoy trade, he's sitting there talking about his racist. He's just butthurt because he got sent from freaking Philadelphia to a place like freaking Buffalo, period. He didn't want to go to Buffalo, and even though he's gotten a new deal and got a whole lot more guaranteed money, he's still upset and butthurt about the fact that he got traded. 
Because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to sit there and call somebody like a Chip Kelly a racist when he traded away his black running back and replaced him with two black running backs that he signed in free agency as the head of personnel in DeMarco Murray and Ryan Matthews. Does that make any freaking sense on God's green earth? No! All the talk about Chip Kelly wanting Marcus Mariota, having this love affair for Marcus Mariota. It was a two-year talking point when it came to the NFL draft. That moment in time where Marcus Mariota would be declared eligible for the NFL draft, we assumed it would be in 2015. What were the Philadelphia Eagles, and in particular Chip Kelly, going to do to be able to ensure that he got his guy and Marcus Mariota? Oh, by the way, Marcus Mariota is fucking Hawaiian! But I guess that makes him a racist right. Oh, because he's not black, that's different and it doesn't count. No, it would tend to be, at least based off of my observations in my 34 years of life, that if somebody has a lot of prejudices towards one group of people, if they have a flat-out racist group view of one group of people, it tends to trickle over to other races and other ethnicities and other groups of people as well. It tends to not be confined and constricted into just one thing. This is just so ridiculous and so stupid on so many different levels. It really, truly is. Because when you look back, let's say, at the 2014 NFL draft, the Eagles' first-round pick was Marcus Smith, a black guy from the college Louisville. Highly doubt you'd be taking a black athlete with your first-round pick if you were that racist. Well, you're going to point to the previous year in the first two rounds where he took Lane Johnson and Zach Ertz. Those were picks that made sense. Those were guys that were taken about where they should have been taken in the draft. They had, again, absolutely nothing to do with skin color, LaShawn McCoy, you stupid fucking idiot. And then you even look at 2014, the next two rounds. He took Jordan Matthews and Josh Huff, two receivers that, oh, by the way, happened to be freaking black. And then let's look at the 2015 NFL draft. In the first round. They take Nelson Aguilar, wide receiver from USC. What color is he? Oh, black. Now, I don't know. Maybe Chip Kelly was sitting there. He was all busy spit shining his stainless steel swats because when he announced that pick, when he called it in to be written on the card, I don't know. But it seems like, again, if I was a racist, I wouldn't be investing a first-round pick on a black wide receiver. And then he followed that up. By taking Eric Rowe in the second round, and last time I checked, he ain't white. Now, maybe Chip Kelly and everybody else in the Eagles' war room had their white hoods on, and they were burning crosses when they made this selection. I don't freaking know. Maybe in the third round, when they took another brother in Jordan Hicks from Texas. Maybe he sat there and was getting the nooses ready, because they were going to have one of those good old-fashioned hometown lynchings. With all the racial problems we still have in this country, in particular, the treatment of black males, and in particular young black males, by our police as a whole, we're going to sit there and trot this type of absolute garbage out there? I mean, this is trash. You have real legitimate questions when it comes to race in this country in places like Baltimore and Ferguson, Missouri, and what have you. And you've got idiots that should know better, that should understand better, Individuals like LaShawn McCoy, who have something at stake here, and to sit there and say this type of dumb crap. This is bad. And this is not just something that should be laughed off. This is not something that should just be there and be forgotten about eventually. This is troubling. This is very concerning. Now, if LaShawn McCoy is mad because Riley Cooper still has a job with the Eagles after Riley Cooper went off the racist rampage, I understand that to a degree. I would probably have a bit of a problem working with the fucking guy, too. But at some point in time, kind of got to get over yourself at least a little bit. You still got a job to do. You still got to make your living. And let's be honest, you could sit there and get mad about Riley Cooper saying that word all day freaking long. But how many times is that said in the Philadelphia Eagles locker room from one black man to another? Instead of getting mad at... Somebody particular for saying it because he belongs to one group of people. How about just getting mad that that word is even freaking used in any way, shape, or form today, period? This is so bad and so ridiculous by LaShawn McCoy that, in my opinion, he should be suspended. And I mean that seriously. 
because at some point in time, it goes beyond freedom of speech to just being complete and total stupidity. And while on the one hand, you have the right to say whatever you want, on the other hand, in the working world, that doesn't mean you can say whatever you want and there's not potentially consequences or repercussions for your actions or what comes as a result of this. In my opinion, LaShawn McCoy should at least be suspended for the first week of the 2015 season, if not the first two weeks. Now, unfortunately for the NFL, as they'll try and spin the whole deflate gate crap, as they sit there and bungled numerous times what to do in terms of the domestic violence problems that their league had in 2014, I don't expect anything to come of it, and I don't expect anything to happen. But there should be. I think Rex Ryan and the Pagula should be all over this. They should be like, look, you shouldn't be sitting there and making those type of baseless accusations, especially when not only are they baseless, it makes you look like a fucking idiot. If a guy was so racist that he couldn't wait to get rid of you, why would he replace you with two guys at your position of the same skin color? LaShawn well, McCoy is a freaking idiot. Cut on a dime my ass. A player that I liked, a player that I respected. I assure you that's no longer the case. I shouldn't be surprised. There's a lot of times when you look at these guys that you like and you respect in terms of celebrities and athletes, when you dig deeper, you find out there's really not much there to like and there's really not much there to respect. And most certainly, because of the idiotic shit that came out of LaShawn McCoy's mouth, no matter what he'll try to say to apologize or what he gets caught up in or what he does to backtrack, he lost a lot of respect from a lot of people, and I know he most certainly did me, and he should lose your respect as well. Because there is no type of place for this at all. Racism is a terrible evil of this society, and it has been a terrible evil that, frankly, the foundation in this country was built off of the backs of for 200-plus years. It's time for it to go away. It's time for it to stop. But when we have people race-baiting like this in a foundationless, baseless, idiotic, hateful, closed-minded, narrow-sighted type of way, it doesn't help matters. It only makes matters worse. And when we talk about, you know, things that are bad, this type of crap is damn near as bad as anything else because it becomes counterproductive at a time in this country, in this society, where we still have these deep-seated issues that need to be worked through and need to be resolved and need to be fixed and need to be taken care of. We got ass-ass like him that are butt-hurt because the white coach traded him to Buffalo, and that makes him a racist. If Chip Kelly starts firebombing churches and burning crosses in your front yard, then we'll talk. Until then, we'll Sean McCoy. Shut the fuck up.